Hello, this is the Phantom Safety Pin, and welcome back to Let's Play Spore. Now we finally proceeded out of Tribal Stage, and today we're going to design our city, but first that means, well, designing our houses and our buildings. Now, since I'm really lazy, you're going to see me just kind of picking them from a list of already created houses, but rest assured that uh, after you've got all your buildings set up and, it, 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 and you've got everything, it becomes a much more interesting part of the game. So, our whole idea in this part of the game is to become the most powerful nation on the planet and eventually wipe out all the other nations. Just like pretty much real life, to be honest. A lot like the Civilization games as well. Surprisingly so, actually. So we're going to do that by getting these Spice Geysers. Spice is basically the equivalent of a good that you trade. And it's very important in this stage and the next. As you can see, we are the first city on the planet. And everybody else is still tribes yet, so... Eventually they'll get with the program. Looks like one already has. Over here, this warrior city. And now that we've actually... And since we are religious, we're gonna probably butt heads with them quite fairly often. Our first task is, of course, to design a profitable city. And what we're going to want to do is put a factory and an entertainment building down. This will keep our city profitable as well as our civil civilians happy. This is the anthem generator. Very, very fun. You see me playing around with the anthem a little bit. Which eventually I said, screw it. I decided to just load one up that I had already created. I've created quite a few of these anthems, as you could see. And of course, we can also have our civilian outfit ed editor, which I won't be showing off too often. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, occasionally, uh, my game does not have my civilian make sound when I'm trying to dress him, and I don't know why. That's what happened here, and that's why he's not making any noise. Now, in this particular editor for the clothing of our civilians, you can see we have some new features. We have some new masks, new hats, new chest plates, and I kind of played around with some ideas and eventually decided on this. Now, what you're not seeing is I've had kind of a false start and, well, ended up having to re-record this part. Thanks for crashing on me, game. I really appreciate that. So, you know what, I originally decided to take off the, uh, kilt, but I decided to put it back on because I liked how it looked. And I believe I changed the coloration on the clothing as well. So, as you can see, the same basic clothing editor is here and still the same, but with more options. And when we get to the space stage, we'll be adding even more options to that clothing segment, which you will see in a few videos from now. Other than that, I felt it was a fairly decent outfit. I played around with putting bows and stuff on it and decided to add a feather. And here's something I don't think I've seen, any, I've seen uh, me use in the game yet. The uh, asymmetric feature. If you press A on the keyboard while you're picking, picking out your uh, tools or your clothing or parts on your creature in the creature creator, you can... Uh, give your animal asymmetric parts and that is why some create that's how they get creations out there that have three legs or three arms or multiple body parts or without them being asymmetric it's a very very handy little shortcut now that we're done dressing our creature I really wish they had kind of put shoes in I think that would be interesting if they had now that we're done dressing our creature we have our city all profitable it's time to start, well, making some money. And we've already got four Spice Geysers, with a fifth on the way. A new city has been founded, as you can see. Looks like this one's a religious one. We're gonna want to probably put that one in our pocket shortly. And as for this one over here, we're gonna probably want to attack it. Unless a new village, you know, ends up being a thing. So, I'm gonna focus my efforts on 
Ah, another city has been founded. Looks like it's an economic one. This would be a really easy one for us to take over. Economic cities tend to have very, very poor um, startup. They tend to have very poor... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Come on, Phantom. Ah, yes. They tend to have very poor um, protection on them, making it very easy to take them over early in the game. Or late in the game, as it were. Economic cities usually do not last long unless you start as an economic city. They usually get wiped out fairly quickly. We've got a couple more cities, most of them military. I'm surprised how many of them are military this round through. Very, very strange. Lots and lots of military ones, not so many religious ones, to be honest. Now there's the other feature of this stage is, well, making allies. They're going to be very useful when you end up having to go to war, or when you just want them to be decent human beings to you. Or, well, whatever your creature is. I guess not human being, really. And there's many ways you can make allies and make enemies as well. For example, if a company... If, I'm sorry, if a country is warring with another nation... And here I played around with the position of the buildings to make them a little, make the city a little more profitable for me. Um, but as I was saying, more people, if you have more nations that are on your side than not, that's a good thing, obviously. But as I was saying, if you are in a position where you're being, where you attack a country that somebody else is also attacking, that will gain favor with them. Oh look, another city's been founded. Actually, looks like two others. We have another religious, uh, another military. Lots and lots of military cities. Really fascinating. And you'll notice also that we have some turrets down there. Those are very, very important for protection, and you'll see me throwing them down much later because, well... Some nations are just very, very aggressive, and there's always at least one nation that doesn't want to be friends with you on your home continent. Looks like Humsky's pretty much in our pocket now. There we go. And we have done a religious capture of this city, which means that it will now be a religious city. Now, as the game says, if you capture a city of another type by your own means, it will become... It will be a case where you can choose whether it stays the city it was, or whether it becomes a city of your nation's typing. For example, this city I have changed to religious, and I will be changing all the cities to religious. Unfortunately, it didn't seem like Flame Nation really liked our meddling too much. Maybe they had stock in a... Uh, trade route with it, or maybe they just did not like us. You can see me deciding on my city anyway. It's a very small city, but we can at least create boats now. I won't be showing that off too much. But yes, Flame Nation is quite upset with us. I'm not sure why. Looks like Red Nation is uh, attacking our buddies over there. Well, Crimson Nation, or whatever it's called. As with Tribe Stage, in the Civilization Stage, when you have with this mod, it gives you names based on the nation's color, rather than just naming it the color. The original Spore does name it um, after the color, so this would be Orange Nation in Core Spore, but since I've modded it, it is Flame Nation. Now, of course, I did get a little worried at this point, figuring I should probably start throwing some turrets down so it can protect itself, because those Orange Nation uh, ships over there are being a little bit aggressive, getting a little too close to my borders. Lots and lots of cities now. My goodness, so many cities. And of course, to boost productivity, I decided to place another fa factory down, which does lower happiness, but... Oh, I didn't mean to get rid of that. 
I, I did play around with trying to move the building around to make things a little bit more open, but it didn't really work out the way I wanted, so I just left it alone. And you'll see me do that quite a bit, just because, well, really sometimes you can get more money out of a city by the way you place your buildings. I've, I found that quite often. And I decided to find a way to maybe move that around, but ended up just waiting for my money so I could put- oh dear. So we could put another city down. Looks like somebody attacking one of our spice derricks. That's not good. Hmm. How very frustrating. We're gonna have to go take that spice derrick right back. Which, fortunately, we can do quite easily. Which, I have no idea why we are no longer at war with Flame Nation. I guess they were upset that we kept, uh, taking all the spice geysers for ourselves. I did save just in case a war started, because I didn't want to lose all my progress. And now that I have some money, it's going to be easier for me to design my city. This is how this game works. You want to design your city, make sure you've got enough money to do so, and eventually become the biggest nation on the planet. America! Alright, so there we go. And of course, once you capture a city, you can rename the city. I did mess around with moving stuff around to up happiness and up my um, profit margin as well. Look at me, I sound like a businesswoman. Up our profit margin! Yeah, up your profit margin. Oh dear. I guess they weren't too happy that I attacked them. Now were they? But as you can see, we have several tools to get the job done. Including our static bomb down there, which will keep all of the enemy turrets and buildings from attacking us. Since we have tons of money, we can... well, not tons of money, we have a bunch of money. We can, and will, attack this city with more force than they have right now. More cities means more powers, and gets us closer to obtaining our goal. And eventually, once we have four cities, we will be able to build planes, which are absolutely necessary and crucial to your your progress in this stage. You need planes. I did get paranoid that this city was going to be attacked, so I added another turret. If you look down in the cities, you can occasionally see your dudes messing around and having some fun. I kept an eye on some other cities before going back to see how progress on this one was going. Not too well. Really not too well. Well. That's no good. We're gonna have to build more buildings, more vehicles. We're really not doing well. The best policy is always, always to eliminate all of your rivals on the planet that are near you first, just because you don't want to try to expand your land outwards only to have some hotshot nation take you out from the inside on your own continent. I decided to show off the new power we got, the Bribe Bomb. This will get other enemy turrets to attack themselves. And that's one of the nifty tools we get, along with the static bomb, from being omnivorous. A full omnivorous track, by the way, will end up making you more of an economic powerhouse. Similarly, if you go a full red track, it'll make you more military, and if you go a full green track, it'll make you more religious. This will also... This will also determine your... Ah! 
Ocean Deep Nation. We're going to have to be nice to them so we don't end up having more enemies than we can stand. So you can see I'm trying to kind of praise and pay them off as I can to raise my relation with them. You can raise your relation with other... N oh dear! What did I do? What on earth did I do to you? I have no idea. Sometimes nations decide to just dislike you for unknown reasons. Kindness of nations is a fickle thing. And of course, if nations do not like you, you'll be at war with them. If they like you, you will be friends with them, but not allies. If they're in the green, of course they're allies. If they are in the red, they are your deepest foes. So, while we're still doing that, I'm going to just build up some more land vehicles. In preparation for the battle ahead. And I had to move my mouse there because I didn't have, really have it over where it needed to be. You can see it's quite a difficult war, but... Hmm. We'll eventually win it, I promise. Yeah, I know, spoilers. And there we go. Well, I just give you money, and now you're going to... You're going to threaten us? Hmm. I have no idea what on earth your... Why on earth this nation thinks it's such a hot shot. Ah, well. I'm going to leave green and red nation alone there and just move back to our own nations. I decided to be nice to Red Nation. Get them in our pocket first so we don't have to deal with yet another nation that wants us dead. Of course, if you insult them with your people are descended from Lilith space slugs, you are going to decrease your relationship with them, making it very difficult. Well, to, well, well, it's useful if you want to start a war. I can't imagine why you would want to, but... We don't need no civil war. What's so civil about war, anyway? So, of course, one good tactic is to attack Spice Geyser Geysers. This lowers other nations' income, making it much, much easier for you to attack them from- <laughs> I just saw that nation's name. Oh, shit. Oh, shit! Ocean Nation has captured- Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some really hilarious names for members of tribes in tribe stage, but I've never seen that with a, with a city in in Civ stage. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't notice that while I was playing. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm gonna be laughing about that all day. <laughs> As I was saying. I completely forgot what I was saying, but <laughs> it seems like a good idea to um, try and be be nice to. It's a good idea to be nice to other nations. So, with one nation that hates us and two other nations that are neutral to us and several nations that don't even care that we're on the map, we are well on our way to starting our new world order. So, that'll do it. So until next time, this is the Phantom Safety Pin, signing off, and I will see you later on for more Civilization and more Let's Play Spore. Goodbye.